so I thought, uh, thinking about this topic, I thought that we might start with uh, outer beauty. And um, this is something that I know that we all appreciate, as Sister was speaking earlier about nature. And I know all of you are probably um, lovers of walking and picnicking and going to the park or hiking or camping and all various types of outdoor activities. And you can appreciate nature so deeply and what it brings to us uh, when we spend time in nature. And I know mountains, when we go to the mountains, the mountains have their own beauty. And we can go there in the winter time and enjoy the snow. We can go there in the summertime and enjoy the lakes and the streams and all the activities that go with that. We can visit the desert and appreciate the beauty of the desert. And sometimes when you're in that environment of the desert, the quiet, the calm, the solitude, the peace, just brings such a wonderful feeling. Then we can travel on in California, this beautiful place that actually possesses all these different aspects of nature. And we go to the ocean, we go to the beach, we go to the coast, and we enjoy the breeze upon our cheeks and the sun on our face, and we can enjoy the water and the waves moving in and out. And that gives us another feeling. And so nature has its own beauty and we can appreciate that so much. And all that it gives us, it nourishes us, it grows our food and it gives us this beautiful sense of security and we can trust it. And when things are not going well for us, sometimes just simply going for a walk, enjoying the birds singing, looking at beautiful flowers. And then we move on to another beauty. And that is beauty of possessions. And I know now we have things like, um, we have many, many programs where they have home decorating programs and many home decorating magazines. We have um, uh, beautiful uh, cars. And I know uh, the men uh, probably on the Zoom this evening can appreciate that when you get a new car <laughs> and you appreciate the lines of the car and all the technology that goes with the car and how we can appreciate its comfort and all the beauty of the car. And then we have luxury cars who even take it a step further. And for the ladies, we have jewelry and we can appreciate the earrings. We can appreciate the rings and all those kinds of things that we love so much. that sparkle and bring beauty to us. And then we have people beautiful people and we have models and we have movie stars and we have 
athletes. And all these souls are caring so um, uh, deeply and so intently on this outer beauty. And so all these things are outer beauty. But now this evening, we're going to move into a different aspect. And this is our inner beauty. And this is something that um, I have had to learn uh, about this inner beauty. Uh, I did not so much, uh, uh, for me, growing up in the 1950s, it was very much an era of outer beauty. It was how you looked, um, how you dressed, uh, what kind of a car did you drive. And a lot of these aspects still uh, pertain to this present day. Where do you live? How much money do you have? And all these different aspects of beauty or that we assume is beauty. But now in this time of 2021, and when I have come to the study of Raj Yoga, I learned to look at myself in a different way. I learned to appreciate myself. Myself as being a mother, a grandmother, and now a great-grandmother, uh, as you women well know, and fathers too, um, you uh, put everyone first. You put yourself last. Uh, when dinner time, who eats last? Probably you. <laughs> uh, when you have just uh, uh, so much money, uh, who gets taken care of first? Probably you. Or who gets taken care of last? Pardon me, <laughs> probably you. But now we are going to learn to put ourselves first, but not in a selfish way. This is, this is a new way of looking at ourselves with appreciation. And so I, um, when I came to the Brahma Kumaris, and I learned about what they call the soul. And uh, coming from my uh, background, my spiritual background, I often heard them talk of the soul quite often, but I never heard anyone explain what the soul was. And so when I came to the Brahma Kumaris and they explained to me about this, this is our inner world. This is our inner consciousness. This is how, this is our inner beauty that often gets neglected. Now, there are some aspects uh, of the soul. And uh, one of the concepts that were presented to me was that the soul has these innate qualities. And they are peace, love, joy, purity, power, wisdom, contentment. And that is our original, <sighs> that is what we begin with as children. And as you probably have noticed, um, children are very charismatic. They draw your attention. Uh, they just have this um, 
innocence about them that is such a beautiful quality. And children are um, have not quite had all the experience of experiences of life yet uh, that have colored them. And so they come and they have this beautiful innocence. Everyone is attracted to them. And we um, can see how they are unconditionally loving. They are present. They are not judgmental. And they have all these lovely qualities of beauty. And so now what we're doing is we are, as adults, we are returning to this beautiful, original qualities of the soul. Because as a child, when you come, you, as you grow, you begin to have life's experiences. You begin to become labeled. You, become, you begin to be told um, how you should be. And others begin to have expectations of you. And so you begin to adapt to this. And you also become colored by your experiences. And if your experiences are negative, then you don't always feel so beautiful inside. And you begin to see yourself the way others are coloring you. So now, learning about the soul and learning about these original qualities, I have to ask myself some questions. So one of the things I started asking myself was how do I think of myself? Now, if I was talking to a friend and I was, uh, my friend had a, had a situation, maybe they were looking for a job, maybe they were having a little difficulty with this. Uh, I would encourage them, right? And I would say, oh, you have this quality and that quality, and I think, I think you'll find something. And you would encourage them. But would I say that to myself? For me, I found myself being much uh, more um, hard on myself, less forgiving. I found myself um, thinking of myself as being less. I didn't have enough money. I didn't have enough education. I didn't have a big enough house. And I was comparing. And then uh, I thought, well, if I don't have any of these uh, particular um, uh, aspects of outer beauty that I think I'm supposed to have. So next, what's the next step? I start copying others. And uh, maybe their behavior is not so appropriate. And I find myself doing the same. And I'm not being true to myself. I have forgotten that I really have all these beautiful qualities inside. And society tells us the way advertising is and so forth and so on, tells us we are always less. You're 
bathroom is not pink enough. It's supposed to be blue this year. <laughs> you need a new car. You need a bigger house. You don't have enough education. <laughs> you need some titles. <laughs> and on and on and on. And this is what the outer world can tell us. And so I had to think about how do I think about myself? Well, I'm not thinking about myself very well at all. I'm always thinking about others. Oh, I can dress you up. <laughs> My grandchildren, you know, I would um, had one grandchildren that I homeschooled and uh, um, we did a lot of activities with my two oldest uh, grandsons, and um, I thought, oh, I, I can dress them up, and I can make them look good, and I can take them here and there, and I can uh, help them along on their journey, which is all right, and it's all good, but I didn't always think that of myself. I thought they could but I couldn't. And so I began to think about how I am thinking about myself. And so also too, uh, as I've mentioned, as we've gone along here, how have my talk to myself? They, they have a saying in a Brahma Kumari, which is very, very nice. And one of the senior sisters mentions this, is you could be your own best friend or you could be your worst enemy. So I thought, okay, well, I can be a better coach of myself and I can be a better teacher of myself because actually, who knows me better? Really no one. And so now I had to think about my actions. And uh, I thought about, okay, uh, I'm rushing around with the grandchildren and the children and all of this but I'm not uh, taking care of myself. I don't, I'm not eating properly. I am uh, not resting properly. Uh, I have not been exercising. And so then I began to think this aspect of caring for the self and making myself beautiful. So you can see how we have neglected ourselves and how deep this subject really is. And so I began to explore this more and more. And this is one of the things that meditation does for you. Is it allows you to have the capacity to sit quietly with yourself and explore and increase your awareness of yourself. And as I increase my awareness of myself, I can maintain this inner beauty, this inner beauty of this inner world more and more. And the more that I can maintain this inner beauty within myself, I begin to see it in others. One time, uh, someone uh, brought up the aspect of me of jealousy. And jealousy is something happens when we start comparing ourselves to others. 
So there is a beautiful uh, series of guided meditations, and you can, you can Google these. They're called Release Your Wings. And one of these guided meditations um, uh, talks about jealousy and how when we start comparing ourselves with others, Jealousy can kind of move in to our awareness. But what this beautiful guided meditation taught me was that I have these qualities as well. And when I am seeing uh, an aspect of another that I really appreciate, basically appreciate, I have that quality in myself as well. It's just not been cultivated. And sometimes it's a learning experience. If um, someone uh, has a uh, professional, uh, aspect of um, uh, being able to, um, well, for example, being a good cook. It is something that I am capable of learning. So when I am able to increase this awareness of the beauty of myself, then I can deeply appreciate the beauty of myself and others. I can see the beauty in life. And when I can see the beauty in life, amazingly enough, it increases in my life. When you focus on the negativity, the negativity can have a tendency to increase. So one of the things that I try to do is to be grateful and to appreciate and see the beauty and everything. And you can say, well, how is that possible? <laughs> There's chaos out here, <laughs> which is true, which is true. But I often ask myself, okay, this is happening. What is the lesson? What am I supposed to learn here? This situation is teaching me something. It's making me wiser. It's making me uh, maybe a little more peaceful. It's making me uh, maybe a little more loveful. And so forth and so on. And these are my original qualities that every time I use them, every time I put them into action, every time I experiment with them, I say, oh my goodness, how could this possibly work? How can you expect me to be peaceful in this situation? <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Well, just experiment with it and see what happens. And so this is the beauty. This is the awareness that we have within us. We are powerful souls.
and we are cultivating that beauty. And every time you use this, you are contributing to making the world a beautiful place. And so then I say to myself, well, I'm just one person. This is a pretty big world. How can this happen? Well, there is a beautiful um, Indian story about a um, forest one time that was on fire. And uh, all the animals were running out of the forest and one little bird was flying towards the forest, towards the fire. And the animals were yelling at this bird and saying, oh, don't go, don't go, it's on fire. There's nothing you can, you can do. But this little bird kept flying. So there was a lake nearby and the little bird swooped down and he grabbed a beak, he grabbed a bill full of water and he flew towards the fire and he put this little drop of water onto the fire. Pretty soon, another bird came and saw what he was doing and thought, oh, I could help. Same thing. Then there was two birds and they swooped down in the water and went on the fire. Then another bird came and another bird came and another bird came. And that's what we're doing. The world is in transition. Humanity is passing through a tunnel. And all we have to do is remember this inner beauty. Don't forget your little drop of water, your little drop of beauty, and put it on the heat, the anger, the fire, the chaos, everything that is around you. Now we have uh, in the Brahma Kumara, we have a morning lesson every morning. And it's often talk about the power uh, of your face and the power of your smile. And sometimes we think that, oh, I have to have some big giant book full of wisdom and I have to write it all down and I have to follow this, you know, every day. And this is just, oh, this is just beyond someone's capacity. But all you have to do sometimes is just smile. And it can change everything. Sometimes um uh with beauty you also get have a feeling of beauty you often say well someone is very charming someone is very charismatic now can you really see that no you can see that they have very nice manners you can see that they are very well dressed uh, you can see that they speak very appropriately. But what are you feeling from this person? You're feeling something from them. And so that's another aspect of Raj Yoga that's very interesting because this is... Um, you know, in Hatha yoga, you, you uh, learn um, postures and different things like this. 
But in Raj Yoga, we are learning about a world that is um, really unseen. This is a world of Raj, which means king, a Raj consciousness, a high level of consciousness, a high level of the way that I view the world, a high level of the way I see myself. So it's something unseen. Yet, others can feel this from you. For example, if you're in a classroom and your teacher walks in and your teacher is um, a little out of sorts, well, now you could you could tell by her body language that you uh, probably today you need to be a little careful. Uh, there was one there was one little story uh, in a classroom uh, with some children, and uh, uh, the teacher uh, mentioned to the kids um, something about uh, something about the, this aspect of um, uh, having you know that the teacher was out of sorts on this day. And uh, one little boy, <laughs> one little boy said, uh, yes, we know when you're out of sorts, because you always wear your hair in a ponytail when you're out of sorts. <laughs> so we do, <laughs> we do get physical glimpses of this as well. But you, you can, you can sense you have a, a kind of an intuitive, you have a subtle sense of when someone is not uh, not feeling well. Uh, someone is a little sorrowful. Someone is a little angry, and so you can you can sense it. You can sense this in the line at the grocery store. <laughs> the person behind you uh, is a little impatient. The person in front of you is a little uh, upset with the clerk. And so, uh, you know, with, with my consciousness, though, with my awareness of who I am, the power and the beauty that I have inside of me, I can maintain my peaceful uh, uh, attitude. I can maintain my inner peace. And interestingly enough, that when you are able to do this, the others around you begin to respond to this. And you can experiment with this. You can give it a try. And so you see how the face, your eyes, your smile, can really make a difference in someone's life. Just give it a little try, just experiment. So now we have the aspect of how does all of this relate to God? And the beauty of God. Now in meditation, um, one of the aspects of Raj Yoga meditation is learning to um, uh, have this connection with God. And it can start on a very basic level, uh, writing a letter to God, just sitting quietly, writing a letter to God, or even just sit on and reflecting, who is God? And developing this relationship with God. Myself coming from a, um, the spiritual background that I have come from, 
I always felt like God was very punishing. And that God punishes me. But as I moved along on this journey, I began to see that that was not who God was. And I began to appreciate the beauty of God. Mm. And what God was giving me. He was giving me back my inner beauty. He was saying, hey, wait a minute. That person with all those difficult uh, circumstances of life were acquired. But you have all this innate beauty. Cultivate them. Use them. Bring out that inner beauty. It's not about being a model. It's not about driving the best car. It's about the beauty of who you are. And so as I sit in meditation and I ask all these questions and I write all these letters and I do this reflection, I begin to be able to see this beauty that is constantly being showered on me. But I have to be open to receive it. I have to say, yes, I am qualified. I am worthy of receiving God's blessing. And seeing in small little ways all around me every day how I am being blessed. Maybe my car starts in the morning <laughs> and I don't have to call AAA. <laughs> uh, my children had a good day at school. I was able actually to sit and have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea for a few minutes quietly. I was actually able to um, have some time for meditation today. And so throughout your day, just like a prescription from the doctor, you can take a little time out and you can make a little time for yourself and God. There was one... Um, I had one uh, student that I was studying with. Is she uh, gave the cutest little story. Is she said, well, she was working and she wasn't exactly sure how she could implement this, taking this, <laughs> taking this time out in the middle of work. So she devised a little plan and she said, well, she says, I just excuse myself. Uh, to the ladies' room, to the restroom. And she says, I just take a few moments for myself. And if you experiment with this at work, especially at work, and oh, at home with the family as well, uh, believe me, I know how this works <laughs> in a family uh, scenario. It is amazing what can come out of it. 
And when I have beautiful thoughts for myself, then I have beautiful thoughts for others. And when you have beautiful, you're, you're able to change your attitude and have beautiful thoughts for others. It is amazing how they respond. And sometimes it can take a little work. <laughs> uh, you may have to uh, uh, keep um, transforming your attitude more than once. But it is a beautiful journey. And so then what happens is I create a relationship with God. God becomes my friend. And I can tell God anything. Now I may have, I may even have a best friend. Or I may um, uh, have, um, you know, they have psychologists and different people, counselors that we work with. And um, uh, I will still not feel quite comfortable with um, being 100% uh, being able to uh, confide in them. But I can confide in God. So I have this beautiful relationship for myself uh, with God as my friend. And God is my best friend. And I cannot be having a good day. And I will, at the end of my day, I will write a letter to God and I will say, well, this and that and this and that, you know. But I can be totally truthful with him. And he is going to respond in God's way with such love. such peace. He will give me what I need. Or I should say, he will cultivate what I already have. He will say to me, keep looking at your beauty. Keep encouraging yourself. Keep coaching yourself. And I will hold your hand. I will be there for you. So then I develop a relationship with him. And my whole concept of God changes. The whole concept of myself changes. And then my consciousness changes to a much higher level. And this brings beauty to my life. It is life changing. It's a beautiful life. Um, I was with a, a class uh, uh, last week, and um, I don't know if any of you are familiar. There is a website that you can go to. It's called It's Time for Meditation.org. And it's Aruna Lavda. And she writes a lot of beautiful uh, articles. And uh, last week we had this class, and it was called um, Worrier or Warrior. And so it, we had this adorable uh, little song that you can listen to on the internet, and it's called Don't Worry, Be Happy. So just keep 
doing whatever it takes to keep that beauty cultivated within. And Raj Yoga is called Raj Yoga because you become the king of yourself. You don't become the king of anyone else. And then what happens? You become so beautiful that you become an example and you become a sample and you become a mentor, you become an inspiration, you become a leader for others, but not in a way that is um, forceful, which is what my personality used to be. I could be pretty bossy. <laughs> I can say, well, you need to do this and you need to do that. But I did, I say that to myself. One time I was giving someone advice and uh, after, I got, <laughs> after I got done talking to them, I said, <laughs> I said to myself, why don't you take your own advice? <laughs> so spirituality also has a sense of humor. It's not all seriousness. And that's one of the aspects of uh, Sister Elizabeth's uh, personality that uh, I so appreciate is she has a very good sense of humor. And so it's not all serious. Yes, I do need to study. And yes, I do need to practice my meditation and all this. But they call this a school. And so even the senior sisters say we are students. This is a lifelong study. This is not a study that you're going to you're going to come in in one lesson, you're going to be enlightened and <laughs> you're going to uh, change everything. No. It's a process. It's a study. And the more you practice it, the more you put it into your practical life, you will find it life changing.